today, this morning, we're running uh, behind schedule. Uh, we're going to start with Keith Downey, Sky Sports, please. Good morning, Steve. Keith, good morning. Um, can I just start, um, as, as ever, with your injuries, please? Have you got any of the, the lads back for this one? We have, might have Isaac and uh, Sean, Longstaff. Um, we've got a problem with Emil. He took a nasty whack to his ankle. We'll see how he is in the next 24 hours. But if, I, if they come through, then Isaac and, and Sean might be available for the weekend. So obviously, with you saying with the injury to, to Kraft, that would leave you even, even shorter at the back. You're not getting any of the centre-backs available, no. though. No, unfortunately not. No, I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, we've got six centre backs on the books and five of them are injured. It's quite remarkable. And the one standing that we put in there, he's got injured too. So it's a bit of a sods law. But uh, there we have it. We've been, you know, unfortunate in injuries this year, in my opinion. But uh, and that sums us up at the minute in that respect. I know you had the youngster Kel Watts in the squad last week. Does that maybe mean that he could make his debut? Well, I mean, there's a possibility, but the only thing is with the boy, yeah, the boy hasn't played for something like five months, which is a big ask if he hasn't played at all. Now, he was out on loan and did very, very well, um, and we're very, very pleased with his progress, but it's a big, big ask to ask somebody to come in and make their debut when you haven't had a game under your belt for, for so long, so uh, that's, that's, in, that's in with me thought process. Um, and I know Andy sort of put his hand up and offered to play centre back last week if, if needed. Could could he then come into play? <laughs> I think we'll leave Andy where he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, long time ago, but I think we'll leave Andy where he is. Um, just in, just in terms of the season in general, what happens then after Sunday? I mean, do you know how, well, I mean, how long it's going to have off? Short term around. I mean, it's not official yet, but I think everybody's talking about the twelfth of September as the restart. So we'll have a break for three weeks. I think it's vitally important because during lockdown, we asked the players to adhere to a programme, which they all did. Um, so I think it's vitally important that they have a break, at least for a couple of weeks. And, um, and then we have a three-week programme similar to what we've just been through before, before the lockdown. So again, it's, on, and, you know, it's, it's on grounds where we've never been before. So it, it, it's difficult. But I do think it's vitally important that everybody needs a break. Um, they've been going a long, long time now, the players. And as I said, during lockdown, we asked them to continue a programme which was pretty physical. So um, I think they need a break and then we'll go from there. I guess the players' bodies have had to, or, or are having to get used to a whole new regime and a whole new way of working. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult because, you know, the, the one thing we do, it's all repetitive, isn't it? You know, we're, we're creatures of habit in this industry, you know, when we train how long we train for and everything is now geared around sports science and all the rest of it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult for everybody concerned. That's for sure. Obviously after Liverpool on Monday, that's a transfer window open. There obviously is so much uncertainty at the club. I think you said after Brighton that it would be business as usual and, and that's just the way you're going to have to work it. Are you in a position after Monday that despite the takeover talk in the background, you are able to make a move for a player if you want to bring someone in? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, so, yeah. So, you know, all the supporters listening to that, yes, of course. When I say business as usual, we've got one or two things in the fire right now. Um, let's hope we can pull them off. Um, we've got competition, but, you know, I think that's going to be um, right the way throughout the summer. So, look, as soon as it opens, we'll, we'll go to work. And... And let's see if we can improve the squad and, um, and, and keep taking the club forward. That must comfort you a little bit then, Steve, because I think a lot of people just expected everything to be on hold until we got a resolution to the takeover. No, I mean, that's not the case. I mean, look, I've said many, many times, Keith, we need, we need that decision to be made one way or the other. And, um, but the only thing that I can do at the minute, with, along with, with, with Lee, is to, is to keep planning as best we can. And that includes obviously the transfer market, and um, and of course for a lot of clubs, Keith, even without a takeover, I think a lot of clubs will be taking stock of the situation, with no income from season tickets, and you know a large chunk of money missing from, you know the TV rights, you know there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, which obviously a lot of planning has has been a dis, dis, disrupted because of what's happened in the world. 
So um, I think a lot of people will be cutting the cloth. I think a lot of people will be, I don't think there'll be huge, huge transfers like there was and like there is in the past now. Of course, some of the big clubs, um, some of the really big, big clubs will be, will be able to do it. But, you know, a, a lot, a lot will be, uh, will, find it, will find it very tough. With the injuries to Lascelles and, and, and Shah, will that mean you might need to look to bring in a centre-back, at least one as well? Well, we're hoping that there could be, even with Shah having an operation, look, we've got six on the books. You know, if you're going to play a back four, then usually, you know, you have two for every position. So um, we'll see how they are. We'll see how they are, we hope. Yeah, Steve, I'll just, I think, I think we got to the end of what you were saying there about, about um, the defensive situation and you think you've probably got enough centre-backs. Just, I might have missed it last week. Um, Shar, do you know how long he's going to be out? Well, it, he has an operation uh, this, this afternoon. Um, so we're hoping that hopefully eight weeks, six weeks, but we are hoping that, you know, when the season is about to start, he's going to be there or thereabouts. Um, and that goes for the cells. We think he can stop. And all the ones who are injured, Dummett, Aaron Clark, um, we hope all of them can join in training when we when we resume on the probably the 17th of August. I know you said you would you talk about the, the situation with the guys you've got on loan once the season finished. Um, obviously, they'll all be off on, on Monday and away. Is there any decision being made on any of those lads yet? No, we'll have the conversations. I'm, I'm going to sit down with Lee after the, after the season finishes um, and, of course, find out the respective positions that the clubs find and what they want for their players and this, that and the other. Um, so, but there's no doubt the three of them, the three of them in their own way, have certainly helped us. You know, for example, Danny, we haven't had a left back. You know, we haven't have brought Danny in, we'd have been we'd have been toiling in that position. Um, and Ben Taleb since the break come has come back very, 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 very well. The one who hasn't had the game time really is, is Lazaro. So but on the quiet I've been very pleased with him. So um we'll see. We'll see what the situation is, what sort of money they're looking for, the the their parent club and uh, make a decision after that. Last question from me. I know it's early in the morning, um, but we're asking all managers this today. Um, VAR introduced this season. Going into the last game, are you able to, in one or two words, sum up how it's been for you and your experience of it? Uh, disappointing it's been for me and hugely frustrating. And I think what we brought it in for was to make the clear and obvious, you know, when a goal, you know, the... The, the, the goal that springs to mind straight away is Thierry Henry's against the Republic all them years ago. You know, the blatant handball. It's, it was brought in for me to, to erase all them. Now we're looking at margins and too often. and uh, For me, it's, um, it's not been a success at all. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Keith. Vicky Sparks, PLP. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Um, just, just generally for a moment, looking back at this your first season at Newcastle apart from all the the strangeness that everybody has endured how would you assess it um well it's certainly been long and I still didn't think that we'd be sitting at the end of July nearly <laughs> and the season not finished um but look I've 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 really enjoyed it lows and all um it's a great club um and I've you know I've learned a lot even in been in it a long, long time. Learned a lot of how it works. Um, but overall, we've done okay. So um, onwards and upwards. Yeah, what are your hopes then for taking this club forward, given everything as it stands at the moment? Well, I'm sure the next question you're going to ask me is about takeover. And I think we need a bit of clarity on that. I've said enough on that. Um, but if not, then look, a lot of clubs as well now have absolutely what's just happened in the world. You know, especially the lower clubs where some of them are struggling to exist. So I think there's going to be, be a big reality check in that respect. So, you know, it's going to be difficult for, for all of us and, and, of course, us as well. Um, and the one thing that we have to do is, is out of what I've said, is the longer you're in the Premier League, the bigger and better that you've become. Now it's worth third year. And let's be fair, we've comfortably stayed up this year, but we can't just be happy with that. We've got to try 
and keep moving the club forward and adding that little bit of quality, which improves you. Now, I think in the summer, you know, with St Maximum and Almiron in particular, you know, they've, they've improved us. So we've got to try and keep improving and see what we can do this summer. Let's talk about Liverpool. I think we're running out of words, Steve, but uh, <laughs> what, what a season yeah. it's been for them. And last season. And, you know, with, what's he been there now, Jürgen? Five years? Quite incredible. And when you look at that team and that squad of players and what they've put together, they're young. So they could be around for a long, long time. So, and of course, you know, and the way, but to, to slaughter the league like they have, you can only just applaud them. Because to be 20 odd points clear of it, it you know, they practically won the league before lockdown. So it, quite a remarkable achievement. Congratulations to them all. Um, they're, a, they're a breath of fresh air. Certainly Jürgen is something that, you know, you think, you know, the energy and what he gives, you know, is, um, is quite incredible. So congratulations to them all. Yeah, I'm interested. Is Jürgen Klopp as likeable behind the cameras as he is in front of the cameras? Well, I don't really know him. Um, I don't really know him, but, it, you know, I was just asked a question there before about changes in management. He gets so close to his players and um, there's a huge uh, bond between them, which probably back 10 years ago wouldn't have been possible to manage that way. But certainly, certainly you take your hat off to him. He's, uh, he's been a breath of fresh air since he's come to the Premier League. He's box office, isn't he? You know, he's as good as you get. And, um, and in a different way to, to most, but um, hugely successful and congratulations to him. He's been terrific. And just finally from me, obviously Newcastle visited Anfield all the way back in September. The defeat there along with that cracker from uh, Jetro Williams. Did you have an inkling then that Liverpool would go on to have such a dominant season? Oh, I think we all had because of the season before. I mean, I think they, only, I mean, they got beat the season before and only lost once, didn't they? You know, they, they, were, they were close, very, very close. And as I've said, they're young. And certainly, you know, the, the additions of the goalkeeper and Van Dijk in particular, that front three are electrifying. You know, they've got they're just a very, very good team where the rest, as I've said, the way they've slaughtered the Premier League this year is, um, is, a, is a big worry for, for everybody. But um, so they're the ones to catch. Thanks, Vicky. Don Thulis, look now. Hi, Steve. Um, Good good morning. Bearing what you've just said in mind, um, is Liverpool on the last day of the season a good way to end it for you at St James's Park this season? (laughs) Well, I hope. I hope they've been partying for for three nights after they've lifted that trophy. Um, And I hope there's a few of them worse for wear. Knowing the professionalism, I don't think there will be. And look the way they went about their jobs the other night against Chelsea. They're a great, great side. You know, we, we did particularly well against them down there for a while at, at Anfield. So um, it's always great when the, when the top, top clubs come because that's what you can compare. That's what we've got to aspire to. You know, they're a, a great, great team at the minute. Um, so let's enjoy the, the last game of the season and see what we can do. Also, it might just be for your for your players a chance to have one final lift their game, if you like, for one final time this season. Yeah, I mean, usually when you play against the big teams, what you need is obviously the crowd to help you along the way, which I think behind the closed doors has helped the bigger clubs in particular, you know, because um but look, yeah, absolutely right. The one thing you want to do as a pro is uh, is to compete against the best. And these are as good as you get at the minute, you know, the Team of championship team, the best team in the Premier League, the Champions League winners, the Club World Cup winners. They're a great, great side. So let's enjoy the challenge of taking them on. Um, you've talked a bit about business you're trying to do at the moment. Are you expecting to have a pretty busy summer or not? I hope so. And that's my job, to keep knocking down the door and asking the question. And I'll be doing everything I possibly can to make sure that we are going to try and be busy. We know that we need to improve. We know that we want to just keep moving the club forward. So the only way we can do it is in windows like is open on Monday. And um, but I think there'll be a big reality check right across the board in terms of you know of what's just happened, not just in football, the world. So um, we've got to box clever and make sure we get good value for money 
and uh, make sure we can improve the squad. Do you think the situation has changed football for the long term? Yes. Yes, I would think so. And I think a lot of business and companies might be doing the same. You know, I think everybody who works in an office, for example, and who can work from home, you know, will that, will that you know, employee be thinking, well, why do we need all this office space when they can do the same job at home? So I think the whole world is probably changing in that respect. And I think it'll take a long, long time before it's, it's back to normal, shall we say. And certainly in football, my, you know, I came through the lower divisions. So I can speak for them when I think, you know, I think a lot of them will find it just a huge, big struggle to even survive, which is, which is sad when you think that it's been gone for a for hundred for hundred years. Um, they're talking about possibly allowing fans back in stadiums in October sometime, but possibly with a maximum capacity of, of 17%. Um, is that better than nothing? Yeah, better than nothing. But I mean, you know, when, 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 when will we ever get to full capacity is anybody's guess. You know, I think it's going to be fair way off. So look, a lot of people have worked extremely hard to get the season even finished. So the next step is now, how can we make, obviously there's a few events coming up um, outside of football. Let's hope they're a success. Um, and let's see, let's see what we can get. Because I think what we've already realised is that football without the supporters, it's just not the same. And um, the quicker, the better, certainly for the following what we've got. You know, we're, we're, I think we're at a big, huge advantage at St. James's Park with the following we've got. So um, the quicker, the better, as far as I'm concerned. And you've talked about the players having a, a couple of weeks off. Are you going to be able to have any sort of holiday? I'm going to try. I think it's vitally important that you have to try. Of course, communication now is, is, is easier than it's ever been, you know, with the way we're doing it now. It's, so I'll be in regular contact with, with Lee, of course, but I think it's vitally important that you have a break. Certainly, I need a break, so um, I'll be trying my best. Well, I hope we get to see you face to face very soon and good luck for the, for the weekend. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Simon O'Rourke. Hi, Steve. I've just got a couple. Um, football's great lockdown experiment of 2020 is nearly over. Mentally and physically, how hard has this project restart been? <laughs> Mentally and physically, very, very difficult. But I have to tell you, last night, I'm thinking, where's the football match? In the end, I ended up in Juventus. You know, I think we've been spoiled now, three games a day for a month. Even us, you know, football people have been saying, you know, so look, well done to everybody concerned to get us this far. But certainly, certainly people need a break. And not just the players, my staff who work tirelessly. It's been a long, long uh, hard shift. So uh, I think everybody needs a couple of weeks off at least. Um, so I'm going to talk about more work, but um, you've been through a few pre-seasons as a player and a manager. Yes, there's uncertainty in the world. Yes, there's uncertainty at Newcastle. But does it give you some comfort that you know what needs to happen between the end of this season and the start of next one? Well, yeah, because we've just replicated it, basically, because we're going to have a three-week break. Um, and then we'll have a three-week programme. Usually, it's you know we're off for six, seven weeks. And we have a six, seven week programme of pre-season to get us back up and running. So I think we'll just replicate what we've just done in the last two, three weeks. I think it's vitally important that people have a break because we've asked the players during lockdown to make sure they keep themselves physically right, which was important. And to be fair to them, they all did that. But I do think they need to give their bodies a rest and uh, have, try and get a complete recovery if they can. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, broadcasters. Uh, Rick Titles will, will be with you in just a moment. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function now. Thank you.